it's another beautiful time uh, for me to speak about the parables of Jesus. And I'm always excited whenever I'm talking about the parables of Jesus because Jesus used to speak in parables for the one major reason that uh, to make sure that the, the enemy doesn't understand. <laughs> Satan cannot really understand uh, what Jesus was speaking about. All right. And also another reason is because uh, people are a bit so shallow in understanding. So he had to give parables for people to understand. So there are two main reasons why Jesus was speaking parables. Because people were very, very uh, shallow in understanding. And also uh, the enemy could not understand some of the things which were spoken in parables. Just think about if Jesus, instead of saying that the Son of Man would be killed and he will rise on the third day, if uh, he could just have said, I'm going to be killed and then I'm going to raise on the third day and then I'm going to save the world through the blood that I'm going to shed. Do you think uh, they will allow Jesus to be killed? They will not even kill Jesus. But Satan, Satan was uh, so much of a fool that uh, he did not realize these things. And, and I really thank Jesus so much for using parables. And today I'm just going to uh, check on a certain parable here. And... Uh, my question on the parables, uh, uh, today's question is going to be, what can we learn from the parable of the persistent widow and the unjust judge? Have you ever heard about this parable? The persistent widow and unjust judge. Mm-hmm. This one is found in the book of uh, let me just read for you this story. Uh, it's in the book of uh, Luke chapter chapter 18 uh, from verse 1 to 8. Now listen. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to, to faint. That people used to have to pray without ceasing. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, he shall find, shall he find faith on the earth? Now look at that. Look at that story. Now, this one is a part of a series of illustrative lessons that Jesus Christ used to teach his disciples about prayer. And uh, Luke introduces this lesson as a parable meant to show the disciples that they should always pray and never give up. You should never cease praying. The parable of the widow and the judge, the wicked judge, is set in a very unnamed town. Nobody knows the name of this town. Nobody knows the time season. But over that town presides a very unjust judge who has no fear of God and no compassion for the people under his jurisdiction. And in the Jewish community, a judge was expected to be impartial, to judge righteously, and to recognize that judgment ultimately belongs to God. All right, just as the Bible said in the book of uh, Deuteronomy, chapter uh, uh, 1, verse 16 to 17, it says, And I charged your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brethren, and judge righteously between every man and his brother, and the stranger that is within him. You shall not respect persons in judgment, but you shall hear the small as well as the great. That's how a judge is supposed to be. But now, The judge in this story is incompetent and qualified for the job. Justice was not even being served. And then, 
A needy widow repeatedly comes before the judge to plead her case. According to Jewish laws, uh, widows uh, deserved special protection uh, under the justice uh, system. According to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 18, uh, the Bible says, He doth he doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and the widow and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. All right? And also when you look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter uh, 24 from verse 17, uh, let's just read all the way to chapter 21. You will see that the widows and, and, the, and, the, and the people who are in, in issues and troubles, they were supposed to be given extra care. It says, Thou shalt not pervert the judgment of the stranger, nor the fatherless, nor take a widow's raiment to pledge, but thou shalt remember that thou art a bondman in Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee thence. Therefore I command thee to do this thing, when thou uh, cuttest down thine harvest in thy field, and hast forgot a sheaf in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hands. All right? And when thou beatest thine olive tree, thou shalt not go over uh, the bows again. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. When thou gatherest the graves of thy vineyard, thou shalt not glean it afterward it shall be for the stranger for the fatherless and for the widow you see god was uh, trying to tell people be merciful to others all right and uh, give special care to the people who are who are uh, uh, un- unfortunate for some way or another maybe they are widow they are widowers they are fatherless you know uh, orphans and, and all that right give special care and also we see in the in the book of uh, james 1 it tells us exactly what pure religion is all about you see people are pushing on and they say oh i'm religious i'm religious but this is a pure religion let me show you what religion is all about according to the bible james 1 verse 27 it says pure religion and undefiled before god and the father is this to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. That's what religion is all about. But of course we know we are not saved by helping the poor and the needy. Religion does not save us. We are saved by Jesus Christ. All right? But this unjust judge ignores that widow. Now nevertheless, she refuses to give up. And this widow eventually she comes over and over and over. And at the end of uh, of this whole saga, eventually the judge says to himself, I don't really fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she's wearing me out with her constant requests. And the widow gets justice she was, that she was seeking. Then Jesus explains his point and says if an uncaring and fit and godly judge answered answers with justice in the end how much more will a, will a loving and holy father give what is right to his children you see friends we don't always get immediate uh, results when we pray and our definition of swift justice is not uh, the same as the lord's definition And the parable of the persistent widow demonstrates that uh, effective prayer requires tenacity and faithfulness. And a genuine disciple must learn that uh, prayer never gives up and is based on absolute trust and faith in God. And we can fully count on the Lord to answer when, where, and how he chooses. God expects us to keep on asking and seeking and knocking and praying until the answers come. Keep on praying. Matthew 7, 7 to 8 says, Ask and shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and shall be opened to you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. He that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Right? So disciples of Jesus are people of persistent faith. Are you a disciple of Jesus? You should be of persistent faith. And the parable of the persistent widow and unjust judge is similar to the parable of the persistent neighbor. 
all right let me read you something here about the uh, uh, a persistent neighbor <laughs> okay in the book of luke chapter 11 uh, from verse um, verse 5 to 10 it says and he said unto them which which of you shall have a friend and go unto him at midnight and say unto him friend let me th- lend me three loaves for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and i have nothing said before him and uh, he from within shall answer and say trouble me not the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed i cannot rise and give thee i say unto you though he will not rise and uh, though he will not rise and give him because he's a uh, his friend yet because of his his importunity he will rise and give him as many as he needeth and i say unto you ask and shall be given to you seek and you shall find knock and shall be opened unto you for every one that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh the door shall be opened are you asking are you asking are you seeking because that's <laughs> that's one of the things that Jesus told us and in these parables he tells us pray without ceasing ask Jesus tell him Jesus you see uh, I need this and this and this I want to pay my rent could you help me pray over and over tell him even the thief of the cross he needed to ask Jesus when you go to wherever you're going to paradise remember me he asked and then Jesus answered and said today you will be with me paradise you see unless you ask how are you going to get without asking even here on earth you always ask your parents you tell them hey dad uh, could you help me with this and this and then he gives you yes he knows what you need but he wants you to ask all right So the parable of the persistent widow and unjust judge is similar to the parable of the persistent neighbor, like I've just told you. And uh, another lesson in Jesus' teaching on prayer is when you want to do what is right and you ask in the right way, and you you see, (laughs) let me just tell you, I think it's the Apostle Peter who insisted on this. He says, you ask and you don't get because you ask with selfish intentions. And this one lesson that you should learn, when you're asking, are you asking with the right intentions? Are you asking so that you can go and floss on people and uh, be a bully and do evil things with what you have? Or are you asking in the right manner and you're asking so that you can receive and, uh, you know, that's something that you should understand and while these two parables the one of the persistent neighbor and the other one of the of the widow and the wicked judge while both of those parables teach the importance of persistence in prayer the story of the widow and the judge adds the message of continued faithfulness in prayer and jesus presents a final quiz on the matter at the end of the parable of the persistent widow and the unjust judge he asks but when the son of man returns how many will he find on the earth who have faith how many how many shall he find with the faith luke 18 verse 8 and just as paul stresses in the first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 we understand that a continual devotion to prayer should be a way of life. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Pray without ceasing. Why? Because the Lord wants to know if he will find any faithful prayer warriors left on the earth when he returns. Will we be among God's people still praying at our Christ's second coming? Because remember, he told us in Matthew 6.10 that as you pray, you should always remind him your kingdom come and your will be done okay so faithful never ceasing persistent prayer is the permanent calling of every true disciple of christ who is dedicated to giving his life and for living for the kingdom of god just like the persistent widow we are needy dependent sinners who trust in our gracious loving and merciful god alone 
to supply what we need. And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you did learn something. And remember, you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or share to your friends and family. And uh, please don't forget to favorite our podcast and subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever you post a new Bible study lesson. And if you'd like to get saved or you need a step-by-step Bible verses on the order of salvation so that you can well preach to your friends or family or maybe just feel led to support our ministry or buy some cool Christian merchandise, kindly visit our website, keithmorky.com, for more details and breakdown. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next one.